Well, it's official. We are now halfway through the NFL season. Nine weeks down, nine more weeks to go. And oh boy, uh, this past weekend was quite uh, quite a looker. Greetings, everybody. I'm the Voice of Reason. And join me, as always, for the Haymakers Predicting NFL is Leah and Nikki. We don't know shit about fuck. Woo! Yep. Uh, we don't know much about anything. Well, to be fair, as we'll see as you see as we uh, put up this little graphic, we did actually a little bit better than we did last week. And we all still lost to the coin. How? <laughs> the coin uh, knows. They, they, got, not... they got lucky on the Panthers, and, they, and I have no idea how they got the Broncos. <laughs> I might they not also be... picked the Jets. The thing that did it was us not picking the Jags. Mm. And the Panthers. That And the Saints. Yeah, that that is true. We we may not be very smart. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the end of that statement. <laughs> All right, uh but so, uh, uh, I, Yeah. First thing I want to real talk about real quick mm -hmm. is are Texans frauds? Texans are still rolls. very young. Mm -mm. Like, yeah, a lot of people have been saying, "Oh, they're really good." They just lost to the, actually now the second worst team in football. I, I think that it's just they're still really young, and when you're really, really young like the Texans are, you're prone to some inconsistencies. So, I think that they. They're still a year away from really contending, mm -hmm. but I, I think that they're they're gonna start getting it together soon. Just maybe not. They'll just have weeks like this sometimes. Exactly. Um, but yeah, before we get into our actual winners and losers, we have a lot of stuff to talk about regarding the trade deadline. Nikki, let's just go over every of the big deals that happened this week. So, uh, many moves were made. Um. There was one move for a quarterback made, and that was the Vikings trading for Josh Dobbs. Huh. Now, now, normally, I am of the opinion that mid-season quarterback trades have a 1% chance of ever working, and that is accounting for a 1% margin of error. Hmm. So, like, I, I can't think of a single one that has not ended disastrously. Remember Donovan McNabb? Remember Josh Freeman? Like... Remember Sam Darnold. Was Sam Darnold a mid-season no, trade? No, he, he was a uh, free agency. Oh, okay. Point stands. They bad almost all the time. But thankfully, I feel like the Vikings are not going to be bringing Josh Dobbs in just to have him start right away. Or at least that, that would be the smart move <coughs> to not do. Uh, but, like... They're probably going to roll with Jaron Hall for a couple weeks, see what they got with the fifth rounder, and if it doesn't work out, hey, by then Josh Dobbs will have figured out the offense. Dude's a literal rocket scientist. Hmm. Neat. So, should work. Yeah. Um, okay, out of all the trades, biggest question mark as to why, you, why would you trade for this person? I mean, it's... I feel like the obvious answer is Montez Sweat getting traded to the Bears. Why are the Bears buyers? Yeah, that made no sense whatsoever. I think, if anything, they should be selling. They should, and that's why everybody thought that the Bears were going to trade uh, their new star corner, Jalen Johnson. But uh, he didn't get moved, and instead the Bears traded for uh, Montez Sweat from the Commanders. Which, honestly, I'm not... I don't hate as much as I hated the Chase Claypool move because hmm. like the bears have a butt ton of cap space. And, but that being said right now, they're seen as kind of an undesirable destination. So like get Montez sweat in here, like have him like already establish his role on the team. And then, um, this way, whenever free agency rolls around, you're just like, all right, you know what you're getting. Here's a lot of money. Right. And plus, they already have tons of draft capital. So it's not like, like yeah, losing a second rounder might not be great, but they still have two top ten picks. All right. So I think the biggest surprise for me, like in a good way, but also a shocking, is like, 
oh, we never thought we'd see this happening. Rasul Douglas to the Bills from the Packers. That fixes all of their problems. And the, most of his problems. I mean, you're, they're still missing. Uh, I mean, they, yeah, they did uh, 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 get uh, Russell Douglas for Trada- uh, for Tredavious White, who's uh, who's uh, out for the season. But they're mm-hmm. still. But the only thing is that they don't have um, help at the linebacker position since Milano's out for the season. So yeah, that, that was that... yeah, that was their big issue. But again, the big shocker is that that first time I, I can recall in a while, Packers selling. Yeah. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> like, finally. Finally. They <laughs> suck as much as we do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and probably another shock move. I, I guess it pro- probably other. Well, there's actually two on here. One, and one and both go to the NFC West. Chase Young to the 49ers and Leonard Williams to the Seahawks. Yeah. yeah they're, they're bulking up over there. Mm-hmm. Like I, I forgot about the Leonard Williams move, but like, yeah, that that's like the the Seahawks defense is already like first in the league in sacks per game, right? That's terrifying. Yeah, and then 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 Chase Young to that defense. You know what's crazy? Like they traded that. I think they traded a compensatory pick to get uh, Chase Young. And if Chase Young leads in free agency, they're going to get another compensatory pick. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so they basically did that move for free. All right, then. Yeah, and, uh, and two other moves that I would think, okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Brown's, the, uh, sorry, Brown sending uh, uh, Donald Peoples-Jones to the Lions, and then uh, uh, Minnesota sending Ezra Cleveland to the Jaguars to, to help on, uh, on the offensive line. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do like Ezra Cleveland. He is a he is a good uh, guard right now, and sending that over to the Jags uh, should help their budding running game with Travis Etienne. And uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones was really good on the Browns last season, but he's kind of lost his spot on the roster. So, mm-hmm. or, or in the in the rotation. So, right. Since J- Jameson Williams has kind of struggled since coming back, I think that bringing in someone like Peoples Jones could definitely help. Right. I think yeah, it's co- not going to hurt. No. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers like the big um, uh, trades before the deadline. But uh, shall we talk about what happened this morning at one o'clock in the morning? First coach fired. Josh McDaniels got booted. And it wasn't just Josh McDaniels, too. It was also their general manager and their offensive coordinator. Well, I, I thought that was their defensive coordinator that got sacked. Nope. Nope. Uh, offense. Well, it might have been him, too. But uh, it, it got announced earlier today uh, that offensive coordinator Mick Lombardi is also out. Uh, man, it, it, how, why did it take this long? I don't know. But, hey, at least... At least our, our the Bears got to uh, play them before, because honestly, I trust Antonio Pierce sight unseen over Josh McDaniels. Um, they they so I'm just getting up ESPN. Thank you, ESPN. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Are you ESPN? Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> like you said, Josh McDaniels, their general manager also fired mm-hmm. they, they they basically cleaned house yep because most likely whoever their new um head coach is will probably fire some of the other people who are like yeah their their, their new head coach is antonio pierce their linebackers coach i believe who is a former linebacker himself he played uh for the giants during their super bowl years and their new offensive coordinator is uh, their current or their old quarterbacks coach, Bo Hardigree, hmm. who was apparently an Adam Gase assistant before joining the Blah. Patriots and then the Raiders. So I'm not sure about this man's credentials, <laughs> but apparently he's a rising coordinator. So, yay. <laughs> And also, also, on top of all of that, Jimmy G has been big benched. Yep. 
two big, two big benchings, actually. And so Jimmy G is being benched for Aiden O'Connell, and mm-hmm. uh, Desmond Ritter is being benched for Taylor Heineke. Finally, the the reign of Des of Desmond Mitter it has finally come to an end. Mm. All right, I think that covers uh, this past weekend. So let's talk about our winners and losers for Week Eight. Mm-hmm. Le- Leah, who are your winners and losers? Oh, uh, Texans, because somehow yeah. they can't. Because somehow they lost to the now second worst team in the NFL. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, not good. I wouldn't do that. Yes. Um. Any. 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 Uh. Any. What. Any players stand out for you as, as your winner mm. winners is harder for me to select unless someone does something really well because <laughs> of the fact that i can't watch football sorry without with, without spending like uh three hundred dollars do that that is three hundred dollars like... for the whole season it's like yep. eh. that uh, feels like a scam yeah that is fair um I would no, prob- that's just conversion rate for uh, for the NFL um, subscription. Oh, oh, trust me, Sunday ticket is expensive as fuck over here too. Mm. Mm. Might I recommend the Jaguars? They are now six and two after they kind of started the season a little rough, and they like got a three or two and a half game lead on the AFC South. Yeah, but I expected that. True, 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 true. All right. Well, I didn't you're expect. Think- I, I didn't expect the Texans to beat to not the Texans. I, I didn't expect the Panthers to win. Mm-hmm. Stop doing that. I want you to have a bad season. <laughs> oh, don't worry. They still will. <laughs> I All want right. that first overall draft pick. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Nikki, do you want to go then? Okay, my winner is Will Levis. The Mayo Man. Oh my god, we have been clowning on this man for months. Only because months. He's... Hmm? Yeah, because he, he's that dude who puts mayo in his coffee, or eats the bananas with the peel on, or eats his cereal with soy sauce. I only made up one of those. So, I'll let you decide which one that, that was. But... Like, he went out there and fucking balled and made the startlingly brilliant discovery that if you throw the ball to DeAndre Hopkins, good things happen. (laughs) Who'd have guessed? That shouldn't be a compliment. I mean, Ryan Tannehill hadn't figured that out, so... Oh, uh, speaking speaking of Tannehill, he's still out. Oh yeah, yeah. Levis is the starter until until he p- does something that makes the Titans say otherwise. Levis is the dude. Mm. Uh, in in fact, if I double check this, three hours ago the Titans have said, "Nope, Tannehill's n- not back in." Good. No, and and if they if they do put <laughs> Tannehill back in, uh, heads should roll because he is he is cooked. Don't, in fact, I would not be surprised if before the end of the season, Tannehill gets cut so that they can, like, save a little, like, cap space if that is if that is something that can happen from that. But, mm-hmm. like, he's definitely not going to be on the Titans roster uh, come the start of next season. Right. Because he's cooked. Yeah. And your loser for the week? Uh, my loser is Fox for not doing or not choking uh, Simone Biles as much as they've been doing for uh, freaking taylor swift because like i found out that uh uh simone biles is dating one of the guys on the green bay packers Mm -hmm. and they like showed her one time and meanwhile anytime taylor swift is at the game they hard cut to her every time travis kelsey sneezes yeah yeah there's definitely some uh double standards there boo boo this channel i mean One's an Olympic gymnast and one's Taylor Swift. Yeah. And one of them is like the most, like they're both the most famous of both of their categories. Yeah, but it's the category that, that it's more the fact that the category, like, no, 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 no offense to gymnasts, but 
pop sensation kind of bigger than gymnast. It's it's still a, it's still a double standard regardless that uh, that oh, they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're prioritizing uh, music celebrities over hey hey uh, over uh, over athletic the... celebrities exactly in like the field in like an athletic thing. I think it's more the fact that Taylor Swift can um, draws a lot more water when it comes to eyes on screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, understandable, but still, it's it's we, stupid. We, we, we are like the the three of us are um, sport. We we kind of know sports to a certain extent, mm. and and so we know we like. I'd be more interested on that on Simone Biles than I would be Taylor Swift. I only know Taylor Swift because of how big she is and how mm-hmm. how um how she's more important to more people. Right. Mm-hmm. As and as someone who is basically fronts bo- both. Uh, both both media both media empires, yeah. The fact that they're prioritizing one over the other is just, you know, bullshit. Mm-hmm. All right, but anyway, my winners and losers for the week. My winner for the week: throwback jersey teams. Oh, this was a good week for those. Yep. Uh, start starting off. Uh, Miami Dolphins bringing out the '70s jerseys. Those look mm. still. Those look still really good. Uh, we talked uh, Seattle Seahawks bringing back the ni- the nineties teal, which looks amazing. Oh, the the Seahawks jerseys look so good this week. Yep, and of course the Love Ya Blue Tennessee Oilers. Like the fact that that uh, Will Levis's first like start coincided with this. Now it's just gonna make me like think of those jerseys and him in them forever. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not gonna be able to picture him in a normal Titans jersey anymore. I know it's weird. Mm-hmm. And again, all all three of those teams and all three of those teams won this week. You know what you must do, other teams. Yes. Loser for the week: East Coast weather. Ugh. Yeah, like, so we want to talk about like how bad, like how bad uh, some of the weather is. Um, again, I got the the Pittsburgh Jacksonville game. That was, and you thought that was. That was pretty sloppy. The uh, I think what was it? Um, I forgot who, who missed their like the kickoff, but it, like slipped slipped on the kickoff and made it, it turned it into a squib kick. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you want to talk bad weather, oh my god, the game at MetLife. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That that was that was an ugly ass game for multiple reasons, and mostly that the weather contributing to a lot of injuries during that game. Yeah, because. Jets lost two centers in the same game. <laughs> they had to start their, uh, their yeah. They had to start their back their their practice squad uh, center. So it, it was a bad. It was bad. That, that that game was just bad. Just I don't know. The weather has not has not been kind to the East Coast. <laughs> if you're playing in bad weather, it's going to be a bad game. Indeed. All right. So I think we got that out of the way. Now let's move on to week nine. And we're back to bye week. So on this bye, we have the Jaguars, the Lions, the Broncos, and the 49ers. Three of these teams won. The other lost to, uh... oh boy, how did they, who did they lose to again? All right, they lost, they lost to the Bengals yeah. at home. I mean, the Bengals are on their way back up, so. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. But still, they need to, they need to get their... The 49ers need to get their shit together. Broncos, take the victory. You guys, like, you earned this, I think. <laughs> yeah, they... Oh, there, there's your winner, Leah. The Denver for finally knocking off the, the Chiefs. After, you know, eh. 16 tries. <laughs> Nobody beats the Broncos six or 17 times in a row and gets away with it. Yeah, your, your winner is Brandon Perna. <laughs> he, they won on his birthday. Ah, uh, beautiful. All right. Now let's get into this week. Starting off Thursday night game, Titans taking on the Steelers. You know who I'm taking. <laughs> of course, Titans. Uh, one uh, victory over the Falcons. Um, they, put, they put the Falcons, right? Yes. Uh, victory over the Falcons at home in the lovey blue jerseys. Steelers lost in the in a very slippery game uh, in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if this works... I am 
I need to be very careful about what I promise because I was gonna do one of the Levis things, and I was just like, oh no, no, do not do that. <laughs> I don't want to put mayo in my coffee. That sounds gross. That sounds icky. It, it's it's not even it's like it's not like like heavy cream or like a or or something or I'm trying to try. It's, well, I just had an idea. Yeah, or like. No, it's like it's like it's egg. You're you're putting like, uh, egg and like other stuff in, into something black and into something black and dark and like bitter and I don't know. It it's like sour and bitter just does not feel like it would work. Yeah. <laughs> who told him that? Who who told him that mayo would work in there? Um, or was he just or was he just trying shit one day? Um. Actually, honestly, it could be um. What's that um that tasting thing where, uh, where where, it, it's like it's like, it's like a sort of like a tasting disorder where you where you have like a knack for eating, I possibly. Like where you're, where you're eating random things and it and it doesn't like affect you or yeah, anything. Yeah, that's it. Leah, did you say you had an idea? I was just thinking about um. Just thinking about putting sweetened condensed milk into my coffee next time. Doesn't sound too bad. Yeah. yeah, this is like I was like, what's something I could add to my coffee? Hey, that would be weird. And then I like oddly enough I went to sweetened condensed milk and then I realized, wait, no, that'd actually mm. probably be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, uh this game. Now Pickett I know did get hurt. Uh I think he had a rib injury, but I think he is clear. They're saying he's gonna be ready. Okay, so he will be ready, so it won't be Trubisky. Uh, and I believe they're also getting Alex Leatherwood back. Yay! I be- I believe that's I-, I believe that's who they are. They're also getting someone is also coming back. It should be ready. Oh no, Cam Hayward. Cam Hayward will be back. There you go. Yeah, so he'll he'll be ready for the game. Uh, Titans. Meanwhile, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll see if Lovis is the guy going up against uh, the Steelers defense. So uh, of course Steelers are the favorites. Uh, three and a- or. Three point favorites according to DraftKings. So I think I might take the underdog here. I'll take the Titans, go over the Steelers. But the Titan go on, the Titans football. are underdogs? Yes, they're underdogs. Shoo, give me the Titans. Alright. Still going to Super Bowl. Still got Super Bowl? Mm, mm. Mm. Not this week, they're not. Give me, give me the Titans. Like, right. I am fully on board the Will Levis bandwagon, and I am ready for him to make me look like an idiot. <laughs> All right. Uh, Steelers, uh, Coin has also selected the Steelers for this one. Okay. All right. Next, first Germany game. Dolphins taking Ooh. on the Chiefs. Oh, they're getting a good one. Oh, yeah. Dolphins, of course, coming off a win against the, <clears throat> excuse me, coming a win against the Patriots. Chiefs losing to the Broncos. At, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but Mahomes didn't look good. Taylor, Taylor wasn't there. Maybe that was the reason they, they played awful. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to be able to convince Taylor Swift to go to Germany. Nah, probably not. <laughs> nah, I think she she's I think she's starting her. T- she's on tour, so I think she wouldn't be able to go. Ah, uh, okay. Well, then in that case, the Chiefs might as well start tanking. <laughs> uh... Yeah, well, I believe well the Chiefs and I think another team are like have a really tough schedule coming up because they have I believe a well after yeah week ten I believe they have a bye and mm-hmm. then afterwards they're going to be taking on they have the e- oh god they have Eagles Monday night on uh, week eleven and then mm-hmm. uh then after that they have let's see am I missing oh yeah they, okay they got the Raiders week twelve that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, and then afterwards, oh, okay, so okay, so the really only tough game so far is uh, when, when they come back from the bye and they uh, go up against the Eagles. Okay, so the the hardest schedule the rest of the way is the Patriots. Yep. The ah. Raiders. <laughs> ah. The Dolphins, the Chargers, and the Chiefs are the top five. Okay. Yeah, they, I think I think down the stretch is when the, the Chiefs are going to have have a hard time. Because mm-hmm. they still have the Bills to play, they still have the Bengals, and then I think they also have uh, again, char- Chargers might sneak away with a win or two, right? Yeah, so it, it's really yeah, honestly the 
Chiefs might not make it out of this one, but it is probably going to be an offensive game. Like, oh, I, for sure. Uh, this is definitely going to be a high-scoring game. I think also I think Tur- Turn Armstead should be back for the Dolphins. Uh, for that'd be pretty good. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like this is going to be a thing where like the week after Mahomes got made to look really bad, and apparently he had the flu. But like, uh, who gives a fuck? But like, th- like they're going to come back and just like come at this game with a vengeance. So I'm going to take the Chiefs. Yep. But I also think that this could be like 40 to 40 or whatever. Like four, it's like 40 to 38 or something. Yeah. My brain stopped working for a second there. <laughs> I I'm I'm with you, but uh, I think the Dolphins squeak this out, but the coin is on your side. Like they're taking the Chiefs. Mhm. So yeah. Set. Uh, one second. Okay, hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm picking the Dolphins as well, because you you travel and such. I mean, they're both traveling. Yeah. Yeah, but the Chiefs are traveling. The, it, it, it's a different kind of, like, right. the Dolphins are kind of more used to traveling because they're off in mm-hmm. their own corner of the country, where, vi- where the uh, Chiefs are more centralized. Okay. Also, I should point out, uh, as so far the European, the Europe games, uh, the away team has won three out of four. Mm. Only the only team that has won is the Jaguars in Week Four. The only home that's team that's won is uh, the Jaguars in Week Four. Ravens were away. The Jaguars are away, and so so if we get this right, that'll it'll sorry it will be three for four. Excuse me. So two out of th- <laughs> so yeah two out of three. Uh, Road team one. All right, next, going back to the States, Vikings taking on the Falcons. 1998 NFC Championship game rematch. <laughs> it's not going to be as exciting. No, no, it's it's more like... Uh, uh, I, I, try to, I try to make think of a comparison, but I really can't, because weirdly enough, it actually might come down to their kickers. <laughs> too, uh, right? This is that, that one game uh, between, like, John Skelton and versus like connor cook that was like somehow a playoff game mm. i can't remember if that was actually it but you know what i mean it was like two backup quarterbacks right who yeah yeah but honestly so this, the, yeah this could oh. could this could come down to their kickers though greg joseph versus young way Koo. oh young way hard to go against young way mm-hmm. but yeah because their quarterbacks are going to be probably jaron hall versus uh uh taylor heineke not sure how great I feel about that. I mean, I got a little bit more faith in Heineke than the than the than the other guy because I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, he he did prove himself when when he was on the Commanders. Yes, this is true. Yeah, I mean, as long as long as Heineke is able to find both uh, jo- uh, Joseph, uh, be, like, hand the ball off to Bijan Robinson as well as you know make sure Kyle Pitts is there. Hmm. I, is Kyle Pitts there? Yes. Throw. Exactly. Uh, meanwhile, the Vikings, we still don't know how Hall's going to play because um, Addison's becoming uh, becoming like the go-to wide receiver in uh, in Justin Jefferson's absence, and KJ Osborne is actually kind of coming uh, coming up uh, as a running back. Hmm. So, uh, according to the according to DraftKings, oh, this is interesting. Uh, it's a four and a half point favorites for the Falcons. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. that seems fair, honestly. Because mm-hmm. this this Falcons offense has a lot of good pieces. They just needed a quarterback who could do it. And honestly, the the pieces that they have in uh in Atlanta are better than Taylor Heineke ever had in Washington. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I feel good about the Falcons. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts, Leah? I don't trust the Falcons as far as I could throw a football. Okay, so this is the, so this is the opposite of what you normally say. Okay. Uh-huh. All righty. Uh, well, I think the you are on the side of the coin because they are taking the Vikings as well. Okay. All right, and I am taking the so I'm taking the Falcons. I trust them a little bit more because I think they have a at least a little bit more complete team. 
and we're still unsure about uh, Jared Hall's ability so far. Next, Bears oh. taking on the Saints. Oh, this is the this is the Nicky Bowl. Yes, the the Nicky Bowl. <laughs> so, uh, Bears uh, did what they did against the Chargers. Honestly, I didn't expect. They sure did. I didn't expect much. Saints. Same. They have. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Saints. They have an offense. It's wow. a miracle. Crazy. Like th- this is what happens when you go up. Well. I can't even say that. The Colts are our right team. Yeah. At least their defense is okay, I think. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Either. Yeah, Colts are, good. Colts are good. They just need to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, Stance, uh, hopefully they can keep up the uh, keep up that offensive momentum, given that, you know, Bears are now with – although, again – they traded for again. They they got Montez Sweat. So I don't again. I don't know why they did that. <laughs> I don't know. You know. I, I also heard somebody say that you can't just like expect to find all of the pieces in the draft and then figure out who to what veterans to get. Like sometimes you got to bring in veterans who've been around before mm-hmm. and like create a culture or whatever. Right. But yeah. <coughs> Fuck it, taking the bears. Oh, okay. Ooh. I I have no logic to this. I'm just like, I have a good feeling that the Saints are going to self destruct. Like the the offense has not been good, and you cannot convince me that this team is going to end up going over five hundred after this week, because that's what they would be at. Well the the Saints? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, so... It's interesting. So I think this actually is the biggest spread of the week. Uh, the Saints are eight and a half point favorites. Give so, me the upset. All righty. <laughs> okay. Uh, you and the coin have chosen the Bears. I have chosen <laughs> poorly. Leah, how about you? Uh, as I said, Saints. All righty. Okay. Okay. Next. Oh, oh man. I'm not happy about this one. Rams Packers. This is going to suck. Rams got their shit stomped in by the Cowboys. Packers got humiliated by the Vikings. So, want to hear news from from the Packers GM? Of course. Go ahead. We need more time to evaluate Quebec Jordan Love. I mean, you're not going to... They're He's not... the best option they have. Name their backup. Exactly. I couldn't. Is it still Kirk Benkert? No, he, he's doing his own thing. Okay. He has then own, I, I think he has his I own YouTube channel. Do... Oh, that's cool. He, he realized, oh, I can make more money put by being a gamer. <laughs> hmm. Let's see here. I can Packers make more money and I'm not going to get hurt. I'm not going to get hit in the face repeatedly. Uh... Probably Sean Clifford, rookie out of Penn State. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember they they took him in the later rounds. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the, of course they're gonna say that because a they have no better options and b if they say otherwise, uh, like that would be pretty bad. Yeah. Giving up on him after eight games. Personally, I feel like they should commit to him for the next ten years. <laughs> Of course, you, of course don't, you would say that. Don't, 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 I have don't no say ulterior. That. You'll get good. I have no ulterior motives. Pinky promise. No, they should. They should abandon him and put Sean up. No, because Sean exactly. might be good. What if he's Tom Brady? If he if, if if he was Tom Brady, he'd be playing. That is fair. Uh, so are we all taking the Rams? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, is Stafford okay? Because I know he, he got injured uh, during uh, during the game against the Cowboys. Dude, he got his thumb jacked. And then, and then they said, hey, a uh, guy with an injured hand, go play receiver. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. I know, it's weird. <laughs> like, Sean McVay is a genius, but he might be an evil genius. <laughs> He's like, uh... How do I put this? He's like, like, yeah, like he's like, 
he's like the definition of chaotic good. He's a hero, but he had, like he's a hero who saves the day, but he takes out a city block in the process. We did it, Patrick. We saved the city. Oh. Uh. Anyway, the coin is drunk and they're taking the Packers, even though, according to the betting odds, the Packers are the favorites in this game. Bet, 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 bet. Yeah, the, the, this seems like a safe bet. Rams over Packers. By how much? Three and a half. Dare I ask? Three and a half. What? Yeah. You can get more than a field goal on this game? Bet, 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 bet. Yeah, I, I, I take the over and double it. I take, I take, I take the, the, yeah, take the spread and double it, excuse me. <laughs> reverse double it. Yeah, strike, like it. yeah strike that, reverse it. <laughs> All right. Next, this also could be a garbage game. Commanders taking on the Patriots. Commanders are fucking tanking. Yeah, they're they're joining the Caleb Williams, uh, Caleb Williams sweepstakes. sweepstakes. Well, the problem is, I feel like the best player that they have right now on their team is Sam Howell. Like, I I think that they could go and up. I I don't think that they would be in the quarterback market. So if they end up with yeah, the number they... one pick, I think they might like do what the Bears did. I, I was going to say, I, they might be tanking not for the player, but for the draft pick to trade yeah. and then like have two picks later in the first round. Yeah. So what do you think? Like, if they, they tank it, then they trade, well, either for more picks or they use that pick to like get offensive, like utility get weapons? Someone. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they... They, they... With those draft picks, they could get anybody. They could even get Chase Young. <laughs> Anyway, I'm speaking. Speaking of tanking, hey Patriots, how you doing? <laughs> hey, funny seeing you here. Come here often. <laughs> oh my God, uh, has this been the worst start for the Patriots since like the the? Yes. Big... I, I, I try. I'm yes. trying. I try to remember the last time they started this bad. It, it doesn't ha- matter what year you say. The answer is yes. Yeah, it would have. God, it have to be like the post Belichick. Uh, sorry, not post Belichick. Post uh. Three. Uh, Three. Post Parcells. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it probably would be one of the Pete Carroll uh, seasons. Yeah. I forgot Pete Carroll coached this team. He was coached from... Ni- it might have been the 99 season. Yeah. Because <laughs> before that, you have to go back to early 90s with Rod Russ and Dick McPherson when they, when they were coach. <laughs> Damn. And, this feels good. Yeah. And half the people watching this don't even know who who those two those two names I mentioned were. Hello, children. <laughs> Get off the internet. <laughs> uh, uh, so God, who do I pick out of these two garbage ass teams? I feel like the Commanders are the better team, but for some reason, I think the Patriots are going to actually pull off an upset. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Just doing some quick research by the way good uh-huh. um i'm just trying to find uh patriots 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 ah they're two and six so if they win another three game mm-hmm. games for the rest of the season season they tie okay their 2000 season right at five and eleven Right, I remember. That's the closest you can get to, like, this, like, the numbers. And yeah, stuff. that but was... But their absolute, their, in recent years, is their absolute worst two seasons, and I say recent years, this was 30 years ago, okay, was 2 and 14 and 1 and 15. Yeah. Back in 1992 and 1991. Not 1, uh, 1990. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have yeah you have to go all the way back to 1990 to see like how bad could the Patriots have been, and they were putrid. Yes. Yeah, but I do. But yeah, you're right. I forgot about the Belichick's first year was not a good one. In fact, I mean, yeah. In fact, it, but that's also that's that's also very normal for a head coach's first season to be god awful. Right. Because I also, yeah, because I remember that, but again, honestly, if, ooh, here's an odd question, because I know I know half of us are taking the Patriots and the other half are taking the Commanders. If Bledsoe didn't get injured, 
in week two of the 2001 season, would Belichick have been fired uh, in a, in future I don't seasons? Think so. I don't think so, because he immediately, like, once he was, like, after that first initial season, season he did, like, he did numbers, like, 11 win, 9, right. 14, 14, 10, 12. Right, but would, like, you, but would you contribute that more towards Brady or Belichick? Because if Bledsoe was still in and he was still playing, like, crap. Considering that Bledsoe played all right with the Bills, like, I think that, like, the quarterback play was fine. They just needed better coaching. All right. I, I, I literally think that uh, 2000 thing season is just down to it being the first season of, like, Belichick being a part of the team. That's mm-hmm. always, like, almost always we see the, the first season a coach comes in, it's not that good. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. That's fair. Okay. So, Nikki and I are taking the Patriots. Leah and the coin are taking the Commanders. Yes. Next. Oh, this could be a good one. Seahawks Ravens. Hope y'all like defense. Birds. <laughs> birds. Yes. Birds, birds do good defense. So, Sea Chickens in their throwback uniforms beat the Browns. Ravens. Uh, how did they do? I'm trying to remember how they did the last week. Oh, yeah, they beat the Cardinals. Which is not saying much also back-to-back bird game yes yeah oh yeah back-to-back bird game for the for the ravens Mm. how about that they're 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 with their they're with their kind yes yeah so ravens started thinking things out seahawks are man let me double check that seahawks are number one in the west when did that happen uh when the when the when the chiefs started sucking you mean the, the the 49ers no. Oh yes. wait. Yes. There you go. <laughs> like yes. I, I must. I must have blinked. I. I. I've completely forgot that. Oh right. They, the Seahawks only have two losses. Yeah. Like. The the people who were just like oh yeah the, like a team led by Geno Smith that's unsustainable that that can't that can't last they are being real quiet right now. <laughs> meanwhile the uh... Legion. Of, meanwhile the Legion of Boom is secretly coming back with Devin Wim- Witherspoon leading it. <laughs> Devin Witherspoon. Uh, fucking... As a fun fact, oh, yeah. oh, go ahead. The 49ers have, have were five and zero, oh, and have proceeded to lose all their games since. <laughs> we'll get to the 49ers when we get to them. But wait, are they on by? They're on a bye. Oh, oh wait, no. okay. Well, then I guess we'll get to them now. But yeah, that, that, that's weird. Yeah. So. Seahawks are looking good. Uh, Ravens. Yeah, De- Devin Witherspoon, mm-hmm. freaking um, uh, Tariq Woolen, mm-hmm. uh, Kobe Bryant. It still amuses me that they have a player named Kobe Bryant. Yep. Just yep. acquired Leonard Williams. Still have Jamal Adams, Quandra Diggs. Yeah, I think Jamal. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> they have a guy whose last name is Okada. Hmm. Name they got. Nice. Meanwhile, Ravens. Um, meanwhile, meanwhile, the Ravens. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You go first. Oh no. Go go ahead. All right. Meanwhile, Ravens' offense is starting to come together finally. Like uh, receivers aren't dropping balls. Gus Edwards is starting to emerge as their number one back. Uh, Zay Flowers is there is looking like rookie of the year contender for off for, for the offense. Yeah, like he's leading the team in receiving yards. Odell Beckham's probably still hurt. And yet, I still don't trust them. Interesting. $15 million. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's kind of hard to, to trust them because it feels like every couple games, their offenses or their offense just forgets how to offense. Their, their offense forgets how to football. It's not good. Hmm. Hence <laughs> why I'm picking the Seahawks. Hmm. It feels this feels like it's going to end up being one of those games where the defenses just come to play, like the the. This is going to be a close game. Yeah, like they're they're the offenses are going to struggle not not because like they're they're inconsistent or anything, but it's just because the defenses are clamping down on their asses. Mm. 
Like, I think I'm going to take the Ravens, but I don't feel great about it. This feels like a team. This feels like a game where neither team hits 20 points. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at the unders for this. So the over under is 44 total. I would feel confident about the under on that game. All right. Uh, and Ra- Ravens are six point favorites. Interesting. So, do you think Seattle will cover the spread, or do you think? Or... I think Seattle can cover that spread. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think I okay. I think I'm with you, Nikki, and taking the Ravens though. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm a bit more confident, and plus, also, uh, Brandon Perna cursed the Seahawks this week, so that's why. I'm oh the no! Ravens. I gotta watch that video. <laughs> yes. All right. Next. Uh, okay. So this is a South matchup. Buccaneers taking on the Texans. Uh, both these teams lost. Uh, one more embarrassing. One more embarrassing than the other. I'm talking mm-hmm. about the talking about the Texans is the one that's more embarrassing. Right. Yeah. So I think both these teams have what I think are what, like three and four or three, three and five or, or cl- they're they're close to five hundred. Bucks are three and four and I think the what Texans. The, other are, team? Te- the Texans. Texans I think are three and four too. Uh the Texans are three and four too, but that's like second in their division. <laughs> yeah, that is that is fair. So this is both this is a get right t- game for both teams. Um, so like the Buccaneers, uh, like b- both teams need this win. Uh, it's just a matter of can the like can the Texans offense get right after a, uh, just an awful start against the Panthers, or can the or the Buccaneer and can the Buccaneers get their ship right after the loss of the Bills. Mm-hmm. So I feel like in this situation, if both teams need a rebound, you go with the better quarterback. So Baker and Mayfield take, or CJ Stroud? I'm I would take CJ Stroud. Give me the Texans. Mm. Uh, I don't trust the Texans. Say again? You don't trust I don't the... trust the Texans. Mm. They're the I, I feel as if they're overestimating. Like, they're, people have been overestimating how good they are. Maybe so. Yeah. Well, like, well, like we said earlier um, in the in the cast, they are a young team uh, with with, mm-hmm. a, with a lot of stuff, a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of kinks to get out. So, um, based on that, I think I'll take the Bucks in, for the upset in this one. Um, but. Again, I think it will be a close game. Uh, uh, they are two, and I think the Texans are two and a half point favorites. So the coin has selected the favorites. Right. All right. All right. Next, this one might be a slaughter. Cardinals taking on the Browns. Uh oh. Now it depends on who is going to be the quarterback for this game. Right. It's not going to be Josh Dobbs anymore. Mm-mm. No. So, the Cardinals are current. If I remember correctly, the Cardinals are currently the worst team in football. I think uh, so. At this moment, yes. I think that they would have the number one pick. Uh, but um, word is that Kyler Murray is close. Right. Oh. So. Yes. Okay. Injury. Okay. Sports Illustrated injury report. Let's see what they said. Uh, Kyler had full practice. Hmm. All right. So it's either him or Clayton Toon, who was, I think, their fifth round rookie. Yeah. If Kyler's, if Kyler's at full, if going full in practice, then I think, he, then I'm fairly certain he will be ready to play. Yeah. Well, I guess then. So, hmm, uh, first game back against a really strong defense, though. Yeah, and, like my, and it and it's in Cleveland. Like Miles Garrett is gonna have fun. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's gonna eat Kyler alive. Yeah, pray for him. The Browns are a competent team. Yeah, at least on defense. Mm-hmm. Like, is is Deshaun any closer to deciding he wants to play again? Mm, he's practicing. I'm putting that in quotations. Oh, yeah, he's he's practicing, and then 
come Thursday night or like Thursday at the end of the practice, he's going to start grabbing his hamstring and being like, ow, ow, ow. Just honestly, just keep PJ Walker in. Yeah, he's he's fine. He's not any worse than than Deshaun is on the field. Mm. Uh, yeah, that being said, um, I think I'll take the Browns over the Cardinals. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the, the ESPN, uh, thing. Oh dear. I'm looking at the ESPN thing. And right now it says that the, uh, the passing yards leader for the Cardinals is Clayton tune with four. Oh. <laughs> Cause Josh Dobbs is no <laughs> longer on the team. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, hopefully that will change very soon. It'd be bad if it doesn't. Because <laughs> that would imply that not only did he not improve it, but the guy who backed him up did not either. On to the next game. All right, next. First 4 o'clock game. Colts taking on the Panthers. Colts are winning. Yeah. Uh, Colts lost a, a close one until the uh, the Saints offense finally woke up. Panthers got their first win. Yeah, I don't know. This is one of those games where it's just like, I feel like the Colts are going to win these kinds of games. Like, yeah. against the teams that you expect them to beat, they can hang. But yeah. you put them in there with a harder opponent, they'll they'll, they'll try. They'll, they'll keep it close, but yeah. then they just don't have the talent. Kind of similar both to the Texans, if yeah. I'm being honest. Yeah, I and mean, to be fair, they don't have that hard of a schedule coming up because they have the Panthers this week. Uh, afterwards, it looks it says I think they have their bye. Um, we tend to got mm-hmm. the that they got the Patriots in Germany. Uh, then after that, they have I believe okay they are on their bye week eleven. Um, then week twelve they have the Bucks, which could be uh, which, which is a winnable game. Titans uh, week thirteen, another winnable game, and then really yeah I think the only really hard game they have is the bank uh. Uh, is the Bengals and then the Steelers weeks uh, uh, the Bengals twice the Steelers and then they close out with uh, oh yeah it's actually a pretty easy schedule they have the Raiders week 17 and then they have another AFC South opponent afterwards mm-hmm. so yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's, like, cool. it's, yeah it's a fairly easy schedule so uh, these are winnable games moving forward mm-hmm. so uh, yeah the I think Colts all the Colts all the way unless the coin says otherwise. Let's see. Uh, nope, they say Colts. Okay, so well, I think we're all on board with the Colts unless uh, someone says Panthers. Mm-hmm. Nope, not gonna be me. Nope. All right. All right. Next. Uh, Jesus Christ! Why do we have this game? Giants Raiders. Can we skip? No. Uh, we can't. I'm picking the Giants. Why? Because it'd be hilarious for their new coach to immediately lose to a terrible team. <sighs> yeah. The... Why are you the way that you are, Leah? Because I'm an entity of chaos. I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, yeah. So, again, Giants. They lost to the they lost to the Jets in that ugly ass game on on Sunday. Which is probably the scariest game that was on that was on uh, was that weekend for Halloween. Boo. <laughs> and then the Raiders got uh they lost to the Lions. Mm-hmm. But I guess they came out with a win because Josh McDaniels is no longer their coach. Yeah. I don't I don't know because this is one of my, one of my things like with with Leah I don't trust the Giants as, as far as as much as I can throw them we like that saying because they're 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 running with Tommy DeVito now uh, as as their as their QB Saquon is still good uh they're they have no passing offense their kicker uh, Graham Gano needs surgery like I, I feel there's like Weirdly, there are more problems with the Giants than there are the Raiders. Yeah, because the Raiders fixed their problem. So, yeah, I have like, they have they. Yes. 
The answer to that is yes. But even, but even Joshua still, Joshua Daniels was the problem, and they got rid of the problem, and the, the guy who hired him. But even still, just because you get rid of the problem does not mean you fix the problem. But but even still, they're starting Aiden O'Connell over over Jimmy G. So again, I don't know what's going to happen. I Giants feel are gonna win because it'd be I, hilarious. I feel like the Raiders are going to go into this game feeling relief like they are going to be refreshed and rejuvenated now that they don't have to play for a coach who is objectively bad at his job i'm going to take the raiders i think that they are going to have an offense bold take all right but like i think that they i think they put up 30 oh no yes Put they have Devontae seven. Adams this and Josh Jacobs. This offense can be good. They put up seven. Uh, so for the record, this is a pick em game. It's the Raiders are favored at one and a half. Hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 comfortable with this one. I, I will take the Raiders. All right. Okay. I'm On taking, to the next game. All right. Yeah, I'm taking the Raiders. Coin stake in the Giants. All right. Okay, so now we got two back-to-back games, which should be really good unless something stupid happens. First <laughs> up, all right, first up, last 4 o'clock game, Cowboys taking on the Eagles. Fox music intensifies. <laughs> uh, Birds and the boys at it again. Cowboys, they uh, they absolutely shit-stomp the freaking Rams. Eagles, uh, close game. Uh, close game against the, against the Commanders, but all uh, of them have been close games this year. Yeah, but uh, AJ Brown is that guy, so you have that. Four out of five dentists agree that AJ Brown is him. <laughs> and that that fit, that fifth uh, the fifth dentist is uh, is bland. <laughs> the, I was the, say... the, fifth, the fifth one is a Cowboys fan. Yes, <laughs> I, I I was gonna say the. The, the fifth one is still hoping Brady will return. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the, the Eagles, I, I don't know. The Eagles feel like they've been kind of sleepwalking. I, maybe that's a little harsh, but like, it feels like they haven't been giving it their all lately and have still been winning seven of eight so far. Yeah. I, th- their toughest match, I mean, they've had tough matchups be- uh, so far. And again, their toughest Eagles matchups. Dolphins. Yep. Uh, and yet their toughest matchup was against the Jets. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, Isn't that week one? No. no. No, that was that was like three weeks ago. Yeah, that was week that was week uh that was week seven. I'm oh, sorry, no, week six, excuse me. Six. Yeah. So uh yeah, so I don't know. I I feel weird like not picking the Eagles this week, because I I feel like they are the better team. But like once the cow like if the Cowboys have their defense on point, they're on stop. They could be unstoppable. Mm-hmm. But then again, the Eagles did just also trade for Kevin Byard. Yeah. Who's like, who's like, aside from Razul Douglas, like fixing up the the bills receipt or cornerback room like the the eagles needed a safety as much as any other team in the league needed anything that got addressed at the deadline right so i think i'm going to take the eagles i think that they are the more complete team and i think that they i think they can keep this run going all right well, yeah, yeah how about you, you? I'm picking the Eagles because screw the Cowboys. Fair. Uh, Honestly, fair and valid. Okay, so um, I think I'm alone in this one. I'm. I think it's the first one I'm actually alone on. Oh no, uh, week thir- uh, Thursday. No, first one I'm alone on. I'm picking the Cowboys. Fine. Yeah, this is. Yeah, the, yeah, three point, three point, uh, three point favorites for the Eagles. So. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is. Uh, this is going to be a game to watch. Mm. All right, next, we finally have a good Sunday night game. Bills, Bengals. 
Hopefully this goes better than the last one they had. Yeah. <laughs> the, the awful AFC divisional round. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, they played in the divisional round. I was thinking regular season. Mm -mm. A guy died. Almost died. I think he was dead for a second. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was dead, but he, he's he's fine. He's fine. Now. <laughs> he's he alive. Goes better. Yes, but oh yeah, that that definitely is going to be the story because it is being uh it is going to be at Paycor. Uh huh. Oh man, so Bills uh, Bills looking good. Bengals offense looking amazing. Yeah, they figured it out. Like that, Joe Burrow's finally starting to look healthy, and I think. Joe Burrow looking healthy going up against this uh, Bills defense that has been wrecked. And uh, Razul Douglas is still kind of new to the team. Did you see what his, uh, it said on his injury report? Yeah, or, just got here. <laughs> just got here. <laughs> is he going to have to go on IR for that? No. <laughs> is he done for the season from just got here? <laughs> oh, man. But I, I, I really want to watch this game. But again, like my schedule got screwed over again at work. Uh, but I might end up having to watch it at work. Uh, wait, what day? Is, wait, it's Sunday, it's right? Sunday night. Oh, I'm off Sunday. There we yes. go. Oh my god! I like this is gonna be such a good game. But I, I like, but unfortunately, I can't watch it. Mm -hmm. Um. So. I don't know. This is this is gonna be this is gonna be a close one. I think the uh, I'm just double checking. Yeah, Bengals are two point favorites in this one. I think I think they're starting to realize like the bang the offense is coming together. But I don't know. Like I think the Bills might pull off an upset here. I, I there's like there's like something in me that says like no the Bills will defense will come together, and you know like Russell Douglas will inst instantly get uh, what the off what the what the defense is. Uh, working with what about, what about the rest of you oh i i, like I, I was saying that the uh sure. the Bengals going up against a, a weekend uh what you call it the the weekend bills defense is going to be good enough for the bills to for the Bengals to be like their offense to keep cooking and win all right so, I'm going to go with the I'm, I'm going to say kitty go meow. All right. All right, looks like the only homer on this one. <laughs> All right. Finally, Monday night game, Chargers taking on the Jets. Chargers easy win against the that that had a pretty easy win going up against uh who they play? Oh yeah, against the Bears. Jets ugh, ugly ugly game against against the Giants. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, 24 seconds, no problem. Yeah. Why is it that Zach Wilson is turning into the best fourth quarter comeback in the league? Because, Aaron, because I need answers because Aaron Rodgers is giving his, his energy until, until he can come back. It, it, are, are the, uh, are the moms watching in the fourth quarter? And he, he's just like, Oh, gotta, gotta shell out for them. <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, Jet, Jets are a good, for, uh, honestly, a pretty good fourth quarter team. Uh, defense is still playing lights out as always. Mm -hmm. Uh, that being said, uh, the Jets have no O line. Khalil Mack is going to eat Zach Wilson for breakfast, or eventually it would be eight fifteen, so he'll be uh, for a nice dinner, a, a, a tasty snack, uh, on a crappy New Jersey pizza. I think the Jets going to win. Interesting. It's not that crazy. No. Because uh, like they've won the they won three in a row. I think. Um. Let's see. Yes, uh, they beat the 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 the, the, the Broncos, the the Eagles, and the Giants. Only one of those teams is really worth getting you know excited about. But yeah. hey, you'll, this. You'll... Play the game them winning would also push them into a better chance of um of uh making the wild card which right. would be the most jets thing to do is especially live if into the wild card yeah. mm -hmm. especially if rogers is back by then but like uh yeah I, I did also see a thing where like in their last three games they have only scored 
uh, a single offensive touchdown in all three of them. Mm. So, like, they, they've got problems. I mean, Chargers also have problems. In fact, four out of five, actually. Mm hmm. Oh, wait, no, did I put the right? Yeah, I put the right. Okay. Uh, I don't know, because, guys, again, like, this is a winnable game for, but honestly, yeah. for, for both five, teams. Five out of their last six games, they've only scored one offensive touchdown. <laughs> like, they, they don't win pretty, but they, but they, they'll come out with a win somehow. The sure. classic saying of a win is a win. Sure, sure. I don't know though. Uh, I feel like the the like the big stage of the Monday night is just gonna like it, it's gonna put a damper on this. I think the Chargers win this one, and yeah, I think it's another ugly one. But I think the Chargers like pull it out in the end, which. Now that I say those words out loud, I don't trust that. Hmm. Okay. Wow, char Chargers being clutch. Hmm. hmm. Now that Jets, things. Jets nearly like um, four weeks ago, basically. Jets nearly beat the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Right. They beat the Eagles. Eagles. Like the the the. Handily beat the Broncos. Handily beat the Broncos. Handily, um, nearly beat the Patriots. Patriots yeah, got probably... clobbered by the um, by the Cowboys, and then like the rest of their games, they, they like the only other game they had was against the Bills, which they won. Yeah. Yeah. I I, mean... I trust the Jets to win more than I do the Chargers. Mm. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, but like. That, so, now here's the interesting question. If the Jets beat the Chargers on Monday night, is Brandon Staley gone? Yes. No. No. Like, I think that he keeps buying himself more time. Uh, I, I think that it's going to end up being, like, either a, like, late season move, like we're talking week 15 or something like that. Like, once the Chargers are, like, eliminated from the playoffs, or, like, right after the last game plays. All right. Interesting. All right. So, Lee, I believe you're the only one that's not taking the Chargers. You were the lone one taking the Jets. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. We got some – all right. So, we got some variety this week, uh, especially toward, towards the end of, the, uh, end of our predictions. Mm-hmm. So – after this, we'll, we are hopefully moving into uh, some, I would say, more confident football. But this is the NFL. Nothing, nothing's uh, ever, uh, ever as ever as a uh, set in stone. Right. And that's why we love it. 